Underneath the vibrant chaos of modern India lies a genetic puzzle 10,000 years in the making. A mystery written not in ink, but in blood. Across the vast plains of the Ganges, the icy peaks of the Himalayas, and the scorching sands of the Thar Desert, ancient secrets have been buried. Not just beneath stone temples or crumbling ruins, but inside the DNA of over a billion people. For centuries, scholars debated the true origin of the Indian people. Were they descendants of the first humans to leave Africa? Did invading warriors from Central Asia shape their bloodlines? Or do their roots reach even deeper into forgotten civilizations now lost to time? Now, a massive genetic study one of the most comprehensive ever conducted in human history, is turning the story upside down. Researchers sequence the genomes of thousands across the subcontinent, uncovering a mosaic of migrations, collisions, and unexpected alliances that reshaped what we thought we knew about one of the world's oldest cultures. The results? Shocking, confounding, and deeply revealing. Because to understand the present, we must first unlock the code of the past. So the question remains, where did the people of India really come from? Long before the rise of empires, long before the invention of writing or the building of cities, the Indian subcontinent was already a crossroads of human movement, stretching from the towering Himalayas in the north to the tropical coasts of the south, India's geography made it both a destination and a thoroughfare, a living bridge between east and west. Archaeological evidence points to human presence here as far back as 65,000 years ago. But who were these early inhabitants? And how many waves of people followed? Over the millennia, this land saw the rise of the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the oldest urban cultures known to humanity, flourishing around 2600 BCE, with cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, boasting complex sewage systems and grid-like streets. But then came the collapse, and with it, silence. Centuries later, Vedic culture emerged, bringing language, rituals, and caste hierarchies still visible today. Yet historians remained divided. Were these cultural shifts the result of internal evolution or external invasion? In the 19th and 20th centuries, the Aryan invasion theory dominated Western scholarship. It proposed that light-skinned Indo-European tribes stormed into India from the steppes of Central Asia, conquering and displacing the darker-skinned Dravidian populations. But this narrative, heavily influenced by colonial ideology, began to unravel as new linguistic and archaeological evidence challenged its assumptions. Still, questions lingered. If there were invasions, where was the genetic footprint? If the early civilizations were local, why do linguistic ties stretch all the way to Europe? And what role did Africa, Persia, and Southeast Asia play in shaping this genetic landscape? Without concrete biological evidence, History remained speculative, fragmented stories written in stone and scripture. But now, with the advent of ancient DNA analysis, genome sequencing, and bioinformatics, scientists have turned to the blood itself. Because unlike ruins or myths, DNA doesn't lie. And as they cracked the double helix, a far more intricate and surprising story began to emerge one that may forever change how we understand India and humanity. It began not in a temple nor a tomb, but in a lab far from the dusty plains of India. The year was 2019. Inside a sterile, climate-controlled room at Harvard Medical School, a team of population geneticists huddled around a data stream that pulsed with ancient information, the raw code of ancestry. Millions of letters extracted from the bones of people who lived and died thousands of years ago. What they were looking at would become the foundation of one of the most ambitious genetic studies ever attempted on the Indian subcontinent. 
It started with a single fragment, a femur bone recovered from an archaeological site in northern India, specifically from the ancient farming settlement of Rakigari, once a part of the Indus Valley civilization. Preserved in clay-rich soil for over 4,500 years, the bone still held degraded traces of DNA, a genetic time capsule sealed since the Bronze Age. As researchers sequenced that genome, more sites across the country joined the project, from tribal villages in Andhra Pradesh to the desert edges of Rajasthan, samples were collected with meticulous care. In all, over 2,000 individuals from every linguistic, ethnic, and caste group were tested. For the first time, scientists had a complete genetic map of India, layered with both ancient DNA from skeletal remains and modern DNA from living populations. And that's when the anomalies began. They expected to find simple patterns, perhaps two or three ancestral lines. Instead, what emerged was a tangled web. Lineages from Iran, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and even prehistoric African ancestry, all interwoven into the genomes of modern Indians. The deeper they looked, the stranger it got. Some markers dated back 50,000 years. Others appeared suddenly just 3,000 years ago. Something big had happened. A series of migrations? A forgotten civilization, or a total rewriting of Indian history? One thing was certain, the DNA held answers no textbook ever dared to print. The team assembled was global. Geneticists from Harvard, historians from India, computational biologists from Germany, and archaeologists from Pakistan and Iran. Their mission was unprecedented to untangle tens of thousands of years of population movement using the most advanced genetic tools on Earth. But the task was monumental. DNA degrades quickly in hot, humid climates, and India's tropical environment posed a brutal challenge. Each ancient sample had to be carefully extracted, cleaned, and analyzed in sterile conditions. Contamination, even a single fingerprint, could destroy everything. To solve this, the team employed cutting-edge techniques. Using next-generation sequencing, they amplified even the faintest genetic fragments. With computer models, they simulated thousands of hypothetical migration routes, matching them against the genetic data collected. But as the data poured in, the team realized they weren't looking at a linear history. They were staring into a genetic kaleidoscope. One breakthrough came when researchers identified two previously unknown ancestral groups. The first, labeled Ancient Ancestral South Indians, AISI, seemed to be direct descendants of the earliest humans who migrated out of Africa. Their genetic traces were strongest in tribal communities and southern populations. The second group, named Iranian-related agriculturalists, had genes similar to early Neolithic farmers from the Zagros Mountains in present-day Iran. But here's where things got strange. These two groups, one deeply indigenous, the other from the West, showed signs of intermixing thousands of years before the supposed Aryan arrival. This suggested that farming, culture, and social structures in India may have evolved through peaceful blending, not conquest. Then came another twist. Step-related ancestry, associated with Indo-European languages and possibly the so-called Aryans, appeared only around 2000 BCE, far later than expected, and only in certain regions. Could the Aryan invasion theory be wrong? More evidence was needed, so the team turned to isotopic dating, mitochondrial DNA, and Y-chromosome lineages to trace maternal and paternal lines across time. And the results would soon shake the academic world. The results were in. Layer after layer of ancient genomes had been decoded, each one adding clarity to a picture long distorted by myth and ideology. What scientists uncovered was nothing short of revolutionary. First, the mitochondrial DNA, passed from mothers to children, revealed deep continuity 
a large portion of modern Indians, across caste, religion, and region, carried maternal lineages that traced back over 50,000 years. These were the daughters of the first humans to leave Africa, women who settled in South Asia and never left. But the Y chromosome data, inherited from fathers, told a different story. Here, there were dramatic shifts. Around 2000 BCE, a sudden influx of steppe-related lineages, specifically the R1A1 haplogroup, appeared in northern India. This matched genetic patterns seen in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. These were the markers long associated with Indo-European speakers and the hypothetical Aryan migrants. But crucially, this ancestry was not dominant. Instead, it was layered over the earlier Iranian and AASI genetic base like a faint echo, not an erasure. Even more surprising was the level of admixture between these groups. Rather than a violent replacement, the data showed centuries of interbreeding, especially in the early Vedic period. Caste divisions, once thought to be genetically sealed, were in fact relatively recent, hardening only in the last 2,000 years. Before that, the subcontinent was far more fluid, genetically and culturally. Then came the final blow to the Aryan invasion theory. No mass grave sites, no widespread destruction, no genetic evidence of population collapse. Instead, the shift in culture, language, and genetics appeared gradual. A diffusion, not a domination. The Indo-European language family likely spread through cultural adoption and elite dominance, not mass migration. India's civilization was not built by outsiders, but forged by waves of travelers, farmers, traders, and dreamers, merging over millennia. It wasn't a single story. It was millions of stories written in the same blood. Picture the Indian subcontinent 10,000 years ago. A land of dense forests, roaring rivers, and scattered bands of hunter-gatherers. These were the ancient ancestral South Indians, descendants of the first out-of-Africa migrants. They lived in harmony with the land, moving with the seasons, carving stories into caves and stones. Over time, they learned to cultivate millet and barley, beginning the slow transformation from nomads to farmers. Then, around 7,000 years ago, a new wave arrived. Neolithic agriculturalists from the Iranian plateau, carrying with them knowledge of wheat, cattle, and irrigation. They settled in the fertile plains of northwest India, merging with the local population. This fusion gave rise to one of the world's first great urban cultures, the Indus Valley Civilization. For nearly a thousand years, they built cities of stone, engineered canals, and traded as far as Mesopotamia. Their DNA was a blend, not of conquerors and conquered, but of farmers and foragers finding common ground. But civilization is never still. By 2000 BCE, a new thread entered the genetic fabric, the steppe pastoralists. Tall, mobile, and organized around horse-drawn chariots, they brought new gods, new rituals, and a language that would evolve into Sanskrit. Yet, they were few in number. Rather than overwhelm, they integrated, slowly rising into positions of power, influencing religion, myth, and caste. The Rig Veda, one of the oldest texts in the world, was born from this fusion, its verses echoing both the fire altars of the steppes and the sacred rivers of India. Across centuries, these groups continued to merge, fracture, and realign. The AASI, the Iranian farmers, and the steppe herders, joined by later influences from Southeast Asia, Africa, and even Europe, created a genetic mosaic found nowhere else on Earth. India became not a melting pot, but a layered civilization, one where ancestry is not a line, but a spiral coiled through time. What we call Indian today is not a single origin, but a symphony of migrations, 
each adding its own note to the song of the subcontinent. India was not born from a single race, a single tribe, or a single conquest. It is the result of tens of thousands of years of movement, intermingling, and adaptation. Every gene, every surname, every ritual speaks to a legacy deeper than empire or myth. The modern Indian genome is not a relic. It is a living archive, carrying echoes of forgotten migrations, collapsed civilizations, and the quiet resilience of people who adapted to change rather than be broken by it. The story revealed by genetics is not just India's story. It's humanity's story. It challenges the simplicity of our labels and invites us to see ourselves not as isolated groups, but as branches of the same ancient tree. The implications are profound. In a world increasingly divided by identity, bloodlines, and borders, this study reminds us we've always been connected, not just spiritually or philosophically, but biologically. So the next time someone asks, where are you from? Know that the answer is far richer than a place on a map. It's a tapestry woven through time, crossing deserts, mountains, and seas. It's a story told not in books or battles, but in the silent language of DNA. And now, as science continues to decode this ancient script, who knows what other secrets lie buried? Not in ruins or myths, but in us? If this journey into the hidden history of India captivated you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with others curious about our shared past. And don't forget to watch our next episode, where we reveal how ancient Chinese DNA is rewriting everything we thought we knew about the Silk Road. Because here on Discovery Future, we don't just tell history, we uncover it.